Hi folks, welcome back to Stacy Can Can. Today I am making onion powder. And it's a very simple thing to do as with all dehydrating, because we're obviously using a dehydrator for this. Um, and there are other methods that you can use, more on that in a minute. Um, but the ingredients that you need to make onion powder are three to five onions, and it really, it, just pick your onions. I have a selection here, this is just a regular yellow onion, this is a sweet onion, and this is a white onion. You can also use red onions. Um, you can dehydrate green onions too. This, and you can also dehydrate the uh, green if you grow your own and you pull them out of the ground, they've got the green stalk that, that sticks out of the onion. You can actually dehydrate that as well. Uh, from what I've read, I've never dehydrated it before, but from what I've read that the, uh, those green stalks, they dry quicker than the actual sliced onion itself. So you would wanna make sure to set those on a separate tray uh, just to, to pull those before so they're, they don't over, over dry, but you can pull those when they're done, which is, will be quicker than the actual onion itself. Now the tools that you're gonna need are, is a knife or a mandolin. You do need to have um, pretty precise slicing with that. So, and a thin slice, anywhere from a quarter to an eighth of an inch of a slice. Um, thinner the better because they, they dehydrate quicker. This takes a while to, to dehydrate, more on that in a second too. Um, you need um, a blender of some sort, um, a cutting board, um, because we're gonna have to, or a food processor or something to, to pulverize, pulverize this into a powder. I'm not saying that word right. And then you're also gonna want to, if you're using a dehydrator, you're gonna want um, a separate room because this is a very smelly process. I actually put my dehydrator outside. It just smells like, onions dehydrating, it smells like feet in a locker room. It's not great, not great at all. Um, so if you if you end up doing it in the oven, you know, good luck with that, open your windows. So the different types of dehydration, you can use a dehydrator, um, preferably, at, at, at a setting at 100, I'm reading my notes here, at 150 to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine only goes to 135 degrees. So the, but you don't wanna to go too far above that. Now, if you end up doing it, or if in areas with higher humidity, you can move that up to 160 to 165 degrees um, to help dry that out. So that does that does factor in, just keep in mind as to where you are living and how, how humid it is. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it took so long with mine because we actually had kind of a rainy day yesterday and I had this outside. So it was, it was just taking a little bit longer to dehydrate. You can do this in the oven. Um, you would just, you know, put it on parchment paper and, and um, some cookie sheets or, or such and just make sure that the pieces don't overlap. That's kind of a general consensus when you put the pieces on anyway. But if you can get your oven to 130 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, um, that's great. Mine, the lowest mine goes is 170. So in order to do that, I had to, um, I have to put something in between it, in the between the door. I have to crack the door open. Uh, a good way to do that is to use some tin foil. You can use a spoon if you want. Be careful, you know, if it's a wooden spoon, really be careful because it's wooden and it's an oven and don't catch it on fire. Hmm. Um, the sun, you can sun, dehydrate in the sun if you want, if, especially when you're that kind of climate, that might be a great option for you, especially with the smell. Um, so that's up to you. You just, um, it, it really, the cooler and humid it is, the longer the drying time is going to be. So this is a, it's a, it's a great option for those living in a, in a temperate, in a warm climate. And it can take, it It does say here, it can take a few days based on the onion's thickness, the weather, and the humidity. Um, you know, you want to leave them in a well-ventilated area. Um, and also, you'll have to flip them a few times when you're using the oven and outside. You're going to want to flip them a few times to help speed up the, the, the drying process. Uh, so with all of that, you can, um, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is slice off the stem end, not the end, and the root end. Then I'm going to cut it in half. This is the easiest way to do it if you're going to use a knife and not a mandolin. If you're using a mandolin, the best thing to do is to 
not cut off the, the root end because it does help make it stinky, less stinky if you leave it on. And then you want to peel off that, that papery area and then just really thinly slice the onions as thin as you can and as uniformly as you can. When you're done slicing them, you can go ahead and place them on the tray. Um, split them apart, the, the onion pieces, as much as you can, as they just dry faster that way. So once you get your onions sliced up and you have them on the, on the tray, make sure to get them, you know, you want them close together, but not overlapping as much as possible. And you can, you can take the little pieces like I did and move them elsewhere. Now, I actually did this a couple of, um, 24 hours ago because I knew it was going to take me some time to do this. So I'm going to move this tray off to the side. But here's what it looks like as the finished product. Now, you want to make sure that they have a snap to them. See, the onions should snap um, when, you, when you break them apart. Here's another one. An, a good snap. They shouldn't bend. They shouldn't be pliable at all. So, because uh, you wanna you wanna completely dry them out so we can powder them up. As you're cutting up your onions and such, though, keep in mind if you there's all these like little middle pieces of the onion which I found were falling through the grates. They were falling through these grates in here. So I actually put one of my silicone um, silicone pads underneath and, and laid a bunch of uh, the little pieces on here and it was kind of nice because they, um, as the eyes I was stacking and as pieces were drying, they were falling through. If they fell through, they fell through on this mat and they would just continue to dehydrate, which is wonderful. So I didn't have too many pieces fall through, but I still had some fall through. But listen to that snap, it's got a great, great snap. Side note on oven drying. I did take some and, and I put some in the oven after they'd been in the dehydrator for and I think overnight, I put them in overnight. And I thought I would just test out to see how well they would do in the oven. As you can see, they really browned up a lot more because again, my oven, the lowest it goes is 170 degrees. So I was trying to get it down to the 155 to see if that would help. The oven is not near as fast either. It's gonna take you longer in the oven. So really the dehydrator is the best spot to go. But I found what it was doing, it was more, more cooking than drying out if that, even makes sense. So then I did put these pieces back into the dehydrator because you can see the ones that were just in the straight dehydrator are a lot more kind of a goldeny uh, wheat color, kind of sunny color. Whereas these really, um, they got a much tanner in color. So just keep that in mind. Next thing you want to do is we can go ahead and empty trays. I find it's a little easier to put it into a bowl, a big bowl like so, um, versus scooping them up and trying to put them into the uh, blender or uh, magic bullet. It's just a bigger space to scrape everything off to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pour these into my magic bullet and let's whiz it about. As you're blending, make sure to take it out and kind of shake it around a little bit just so that you get all the pieces together. A, a second for the for the dust to settle. <laughs> you open this up right now, it's just gonna poof. So just just give it a second. Go ahead and give it a little bit of a tap because I can see some of the powder on the blade. And once you're done with all of your uh, blending, you can go ahead and pour it into a clean container, storage container. If you have an old uh, onion powder. Um, shaker, then you can use that. I'm going to just use store it in one of my jars. It is kind of nice. It's not necessary to have, but it is kind of nice to use a funnel. And if you want to use your canning funnel, great. Or if you have a little spice container you want to put it in, you can use a, a, a kitchen funnel for that or however you want to get your, get your spice in there, get your powder in there. And we're going to just gently Pour it into the container. Whew, did you see how that powder came up? The chopstick is also helpful to <clears throat> scrape off what kind of gets stuck in the bottom. And this is how you make onion powder. You're gonna wanna make sure to do what they call conditioning um, for about the first week or so with it. 
there were some clumps when I was trying to uh, get it out of the blender here. There were some clumps that were stuck at the bottom. So that's just sort of a telltale sign that some of the pieces weren't completely dehydrated, but it's sort of hard to tell um, unless you snapped every single piece of, uh, of the onion. But what happens in when you can, conditioning is when you just shake the jar or shake your uh, container of any of your dehydrated foods once a day for about a week. What that does is helps um, the other foods that are in there that are dr completely dry, it will help absorb the, uh, the moisture in the, the pieces that aren't totally dry. And by totally dry, I mean 100% dry, not like 98, 99% dry. So, um, so you do want to give it a shake and uh, each day, again, for, for a week. That is conditioning. So, uh, This actually is sort of sad in a way because this was um, about three, three and a half onions. <laughs> um, but it is, I believe it's one um, tablespoon equals of, yes, it is one tablespoon that equals one medium onion. So keep that in mind when you're cooking and such that, that you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to, to um, get what you need for a full onion if you run out of onions. So that's kind of a nice comparison there. So that is how we do it. Uh, the, I added a few recipes down below, a few links to some recipes as to how to how to process or how to dehydrate. Below, there's a lot of information on the internet for it, so you can you can really Google around if you want. Um, but the two two links below will can can help guide you uh, through this process too. Uh, and please like and subscribe the page down below as well. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, concerns, feedback, by all means, please reach out to me. I'm on Facebook at Stacy Can Can. You can at me on uh, TikTok and Instagram at Stacy Can Can. My website is www.stacycancan.com, and my email is info at stacycancan.com. Thanks so much again for joining me today, and until next time, happy canning.